I presented this to the Finnish government. If I may share. Sure. Um, because I did actually find uh, something from the 70s. So let me know when you can see this. Yeah, it's visible. Okay. So this is actually something that um, I've uh, put together with the in International Personal Research Institute. Um, and so I wanted the idea to actually investigate the idea of a liquid fuel fission system using thorium as the fuel. Now, let me show you the what I found. And I'm still, my, my brain is still hurting when I look at this. This is uranium. So uranium light mm -hmm. water reactor. We start with 123 million tons of ore, which we get 278 tons of uh, natural uranium, yellow cake. Then we convert it and we turn it into an en enrichment. And from that, we make 32.9 tons of nuclear fuel assembly rods. Okay. And we generate 10,000 gigawatt hours of electrical power across a year, assuming 91% 90, availability. At the end of that, when it's all burned up, 96% of that fuel is waste because most of it, it we're only interested in the uranium-235 isotope and the rest of it is U-238. Okay. Right. Here's thorium. 280 tonnes of mineral sands to get 1.4 tonnes of natural thorium, which we convert straight to a salt, thor, thorium fluoride salt. There's, there's various different versions of that. And we pour that in the reactor, and we have 10,000 gigawatt hours of electrical power. So we're doing the same thing. And only 1% of the fuel is unburned, and then you've got to store it. So we're talking about 13 kilograms after a year's production. So 13 kilograms wow. versus... Yeah, right. So the number's huge. So is it real? So what I found was this. Uh, the picture on the up the top there is in 1969, the Oak Ridge Laboratory did indeed have a molten salt reactor going, and it went for 6,000 hours of uninterrupted power supply without a problem. Wow. Uh, the picture on the bottom is a um, thorium reactor built by the Chinese, and they it, it's actually operating now, apparently. It's two megawatts. So this is a modular unit that would fit in a shipping container. And that's a picture of it actually working. Yeah, that looks very so, small. So, uh, it, and, and there are multiple groups around the world building this stuff. I would like to actually go out and stand in front of these systems and get a photograph. When I do, I'll come and present it on your podcast. Nice, nice. <laughs> Looking forward to it. But, but we are we are being left behind if this is true. Mm -hmm. Now the reason why this was shut down in the seventies, they actually worked this out that um, there was no oil shortage or energy shortage at the time, right? And so nuclear was a way of making a shitload of money, and uranium made more money than thorium. This is liquid fuel, not solid fuel, because when you discuss thorium, they direct you to solid fuel, which has its problems. So liquid fuel, you're being gaslit language away from that to, you know, from liquid fuel to solid fuel. And that was quite apparent to me. Uh, so why are you doing that to me? Uh, so at the time, as I understand it, they wanted jobs and employment. And they also wanted a civilian uranium nuclear fleet, which would camouflage the nuclear weapons industry. Whereas if you went thorium, you couldn't do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that is, let me just stop sharing. That that is a long-winded answer to your question. Well, well, it was a good answer. Good answer. Thank you. Um, I'm going in this direction. If it's successful, I will uh, come and tell you about it. If I'm not successful, I'll come and tell you about it. But work's been done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so it seems like thorium is one of the best hopes for uh, the future of energy. Yeah, but there's a lot of bullshit around it. So, what's real yeah. and what's not? Right, right. So far, it's appearing to be real. Mm -hmm.